This time I'm going to clear up some confusion around the opening of the Going to the Sun Road. The Going to the Sun Road in Glacier National Park is one of the most scenic in North America. I've made many videos that describe the 50 miles of splendor that is glaciers going to the Sun Road. If you haven't seen any of them, well, you probably should. Based on the comments in those videos, there's a couple of things I need to add. Like, why is it only open for a few months a year? And is it still worth a trip when the road is not fully open? They wonder how much of the road you can still drive and what trails you have access to. I greatly appreciate those comments. I read them all, and I hope you'll write one. I'm going to answer those questions now. But first, a little background. The park gets about 3 million visitors a year, and many come just to drive this road. These days you need a vehicle reservation just to drive it. I have other videos that discuss how to get one of the rare vehicle reservation tickets, so I'm not going to do that here. If you're unaware of this process, watch this video from my channel. And please know that without one, in 2023, the west side is only accessible after 3 p.m. Because they're doing road construction all night, which doesn't end until 6 a.m. The road is fully open in mid to late June, through the third Monday in October, usually. Here's a list of the actual opening dates for the last few decades. The main reason for the variation is weather. When there's a lot of snow, or a big snow late in the spring, the opening date is later. Plowing isn't the only task required to get the road open. Each year there are avalanches, and the debris must be removed, and then in places they have to install guardrails. For those unfamiliar with the Sun Road, it's the only road that crosses Glacier National Park. It runs roughly from east to west. It crosses the Continental Divide at Logan Pass, at an elevation of 6,647 feet. The west entrance is near the town of West Glacier, and the east entrance is near the town of St. Mary. Most of the road is actually flat-ish, and it's divided into sections. The alpine section, which is of course the highest section, and the twistiest, is the one that is closed most of the year. This map is on the park's website. If you're going to the park, you should become familiar with this page. Officially, the alpine section runs from Avalanche Creek on the west side, all the way to Jackson Glacier Overlook on the east. And during the winter season, that's where the gates are closed. During the plowing season, the map also shows you where the plows are, which is a good indication of how much work remains before the road can be opened. Hikers and bicycles are allowed to ride a little bit more of the road, even when it's closed off to cars. I'm writing this in early May, and at this time, cyclists and hikers are allowed to go up to the yellow markers. This map is updated often, and you should check it several times before your trip. Regardless of the weather, plowing doesn't start until April 1st to give wildlife time to get out of their winter quarters. Most of the year you can drive on some of the road, even when they're plowing sections of it. Unless they're doing really extensive construction. I've been going to the park since 1994 and there's always some sort of construction, but usually not enough to close the road completely. A park webpage has info on things like this. And things change, so check it often. One recent change is the closure of the west side before 6 a.m. This fact wasn't posted until after I made my comprehensive 2023 Sun Road video. But anyway, on the map, red indicates where the road is closed. Pale yellow shows where the road is open. And for you fellow hikers, there are a few trailheads in these open sections. So you can hike before the road is fully open. Separate work crews start on both ends of the road. There's lots of heavy equipment involved, as you would expect. But they don't move without the approval of avalanche experts. These people are trained to go forge ahead and read the snow fields to predict avalanche danger. Again, as I write this in early May, one section of the road has an avalanche warning. And avalanches do occur every year. And clearing the debris is an added danger to the work crews. Because trees and snow throwers don't mix. Usually the last portion of the road to be cleared is called the Big Drift. It's on the east side of Logan Pass, and the snow here is often 80 feet deep. Because it's east of Logan Pass, sometimes they can open the west side of the road all the way to Logan, providing the opportunity to play in the snow, or maybe even take some of its trails. 
Once all the snow is removed, the crews work on making the roads safe by clearing any debris and installing guardrails. Each year it's hard to predict when the road will be fully open. But in 2023, the NOAA weather station in the park shows that as I write this in mid-May, they received a near record low amount of snow. This may predict an earlier opening. It takes the work crews that include dozens, six to 12 weeks to fully open the road. At times it's dangerous work and we should all be thankful that they are willing to do it. Next time you drive the Alpine section, think about the folks who made that possible. By the way, the interactive park map also displays the status of the other park roads. As you can see, the North Fork Road isn't red, so it's closed. But the Road to Two Medicine is not, so it's open. And so is the Many Glacier Road. Last year, to avoid the crowds, I visited in early June, when the crews were still clearing the Sun Road. It was my 18th or 19th trip, and it was a different experience but I encourage you to go off season. And if you use what you now know, you'll have a great time too. But once again, please subscribe to the West is Big channel, where I'm dedicated to helping you explore the West.